Professor Ruggie will begin his remarks soon, um, but first we have a few speakers to briefly set the scene. And would you please welcome my colleague Mauricio La Sala. Uh, Mauricio is a national of Colombia who is our senior researcher, and he also does an excellent job heading our work on Latin America and the Middle East. Mauricio. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, Chris. Uh, so I've been working for five years now at the Business and Human Rights Resource Center, and I would like to tell you a little bit about us for the people who don't know us well. So um, we are an information hub covering the positive and negative human rights impacts of companies worldwide. We produce a weekly update newsletter that currently reaches over 11,000 opinion leaders across the world. The updates are free, include company responses to concerns raised by civil society and that we actively seek and that are not published anywhere else um, on the web. And also we include in the weekly updates cases of best human rights practices by companies. Our website currently covers the impacts of over 5,000 individual companies across the world. To be more effective uh, and closer to where alleged abuses uh, and positive initiative take place, we have a network of regional researchers currently in five regions. Harpreet Kaur is our researcher for South Asia. Aliu Diouf, our researcher for Francophone Africa based in Senegal. Harpreet is based in Delhi. Abiola Okpechi, our researcher for Anglophone Africa based in South Africa. Meiling Chan, researcher for East Asia based in Hong Kong. And Elena Ela Skibenko, uh, based in Ukraine, our researcher for Eastern Europe and Central Asia. And we are planning to recruit regional researchers for Latin America and the Middle East during the course of this year, this year 2011. As Chris mentioned, we have launched special portals which are aimed at emphasizing certain important topics with the ev within the ever-increasing field of business and human rights. So far, we have launched five portals. One on tools and guidance, uh, mainly aimed at business people. One on getting, getting started to the field of business and human rights. One on corporate legal accountability on human rights lawsuits brought against companies. One on the work of the UN Special Representative on Business and Human Rights. And one on business conflict and peace. Very soon, we're gonna launch a sixth portal on business and children uh, in the next few months. And then we have just received a grant for a new portal on business and freedom of association, which we hope to launch in early 2012. Probably more thematic portals will come in the future. We have a tradition in our events to show the human face of the business and human rights debate, to remind ourselves why we are all here. I'll point to some examples from Latin America as it's, there, uh, it's the region where I'm in charge of. First, I'll show you a couple of photos of victims of human rights abuses by companies. This is Ezequiel Ferreira, a boy who died of cancer at age seven last November in rural Argentina. He had been documented working under forced labor since he was four years old at a poultry farm supplying food to various supermarkets. He reportedly died after handling poisonous toxics for months. An NGO has filed a legal complaint against the company. This is an indigenous woman in Guatemala pleading with security forces not to tear down her home to make way for a Canadian mining company. Recently, we highlighted on our site and weekly updates a lawsuit brought in Canada by the widow of a Mayan community leader who was allegedly killed by the company's security guards after protesting these evictions. In 2005, 28 peasants that opposed the operations of a mining company in their lands in Peru were allegedly kidnapped and tortured by private security guards working on behalf of the mining company. The victims included two women who were sexually harassed and one journalist. One person died. A British company has been sued in the UK over these events. I would also like to show you some examples of positive initiatives in Latin America. 
International Alert published this report, which included a chapter entitled Doing Business Amidst Conflict, Emerging Best Practices in Colombia. It reviews an initiative by ISA, a large electricity company that had suffered closely from the armed conflict in the country and set up a project called PRODEPAS, a regional peace and development program. Given the nature of ISA's business, they were interested in something that could bring long-term stability and sustainable peace. The program includes economic development, civil and uh, society uh, empowerment, the promotion of peace culture, education, health, and housing. Barrick Gold, a mining company, and three NGOs partnered to create an alliance to assist the most impoverished communities in northern Chile's Atacama region. Through the Atacama commitment, the company and its partners plan to improve housing and education for people living in poverty, provide services for disabled children, and support socioeconomic development in the region. To conclude, Another positive development in the region is the increasing engagement between companies and civil society um, on business and human rights issues. One important fora where I have seen this taking place were the two regional consultations that Professor Raggi has conducted in Latin America, which I attended personally. The one in Bogota focused on the social license to operate with particular attention to indigenous people, which as you know is a very important subject, not only Latin America, but around the world. The one in Buenos Aires focused on operationalizing Professor Raggi Protect, Respect and Remedy Framework. I'm sure that we'll hear more about his framework this evening. Thank you.